In the previous video, I discussed why the Fourier transform is a perfect representation in the frequency domain of your time domain signal. And one of the implications of that lossless transformation is that we can also use a similar operation to get back from the frequency domain into the time domain. That operation is called the inverse Fourier transform. So the inverse Fourier transform gets you from the frequency domain back to the time domain. And the other Fourier transform that we've been working with so far is called the forward Fourier transform. Although usually, you know, when people just say the Fourier transform, they're generally always referring to the forward Fourier transform. So in this video, I'm going to explain briefly how the inverse Fourier transform works. And then I will explain two motivations for using the coupling, the combination of the forward and inverse Fourier transform. So here's how the inverse Fourier transform works. Remember that in the inverse Fourier transform, we start off with the Fourier coefficients. So we already have all of the complex valued Fourier coefficients. And what we want to do is reconstruct a signal in the time domain. So here's how it works. You start off with one Fourier coefficient like this. So here you see the complex plane and the Fourier coefficient is gonna be yeah, represented by some points, some coordinates somewhere on that plane. And this would be for frequency equals one. So just for one particular frequency. So what you do is you take this Fourier coefficient and you multiply it by a template complex sine wave. So I'm calling this a template complex sine wave because it doesn't have its own unique amplitude or phase parameter. So the amplitude is one and the phase is set to zero. So you can think of this as being like a template. And then what you impose onto this template, you modulate this template complex sine wave by the complex Fourier coefficient at this frequency. And then you've probably already guessed that the next step is to take another Fourier coefficient at a different frequency and multiply that by another complex sine wave. And of course, the frequency of this complex sine wave corresponds to the frequency from which you took this Fourier coefficient. And then blah, 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 so on up to n coefficients because you have n time points, you have n frequencies. And then again, you're just multiplying this Fourier coefficient by this complex sine wave, which is like a template. And then you have this for all of your n complex sine waves, n complex Fourier coefficients. And then you simply sum all of the modulated complex sine waves together. So you sum all of these things together and that gives you the time domain signal. So here on this slide, you see basically just a different way of explaining the same thing. So this is with pseudocode. So we loop over all of the n frequencies. We create a complex sine wave with the same length as the length of the signal, which also means the number of sine waves. And the frequency is the uh, index, the looping index here. So here I call it time point, here I'm calling it frequency. I apologize for the confusion, but of course those are the same because we have n time points and n frequencies. So this is exactly the same, almost exactly the same complex sine wave as we created in the forward Fourier transform. In the forward Fourier transform, that complex sine wave had a minus sign in the uh, exponential, and here we don't have a minus sign, but otherwise it's basically the same thing. So then we take this complex sine wave, and instead of computing the dot product with the signal, that's what we do in the forward Fourier transform, here, we multiply this sine wave by the complex Fourier coefficient of this frequency. And then we just sum all of these uh, modulated sine waves together. And that gives us the time domain signal. And then, you know, there is uh, sometimes a, an optional normalization factor. This depends on whether you've normalized the Fourier coefficients in the Fourier, the forward Fourier transform. Okay, but this is essentially the main idea. Okay, so this tells us that we can get from the time domain to the frequency domain through the forward Fourier transform, and we can get from the frequency domain back to the time domain using the inverse Fourier transform. 
And both of these directions are perfect. They are lossless transformations from this domain into this domain. So we can sit here all day and all night for a thousand years and go from the time domain to the forward, uh, to the frequency domain, back to the time domain, back to the frequency domain. We can keep going in this loop and we are never going to lose an iota of information. So what then is the point of the inverse Fourier transform? Why would you want to go here to here only to go back to here? Well, there are two reasons to use this combination of the forward and inverse Fourier transform. And those two reasons are filtering, which you could also call spectral source separation. So temporal filtering and spectral source separation. And I'm going to talk more about that later so in the next section of the course but essentially the idea is that you go from the time domain into the frequency domain and let's say we are really interested in this frequency range so then what you do is attenuate or zero out all of the frequencies below uh, what you're interested in and above what you're interested in and then you do the inverse Fourier transform and now that inverse Fourier transform is not going to be exactly the time domain signal it's just going to be the time domain signal at these energy ranges. So that's one reason to use the forward and inverse Fourier transform. The second reason to use this cycle here of the forward and inverse Fourier transform is to decrease computation time to make your analyses run faster. That is thanks to something called the convolution theorem and I'm going to talk all about this in the next section of the course on time frequency analysis.